Hi everyone, Aldbar here, and welcome to my Phoenix build variations video. Now, warning, this is a part two or an expansion to the Phoenix build, and it's not meant to be a standalone. It builds upon everything that was in the original video, so please keep that in mind. It has been brought to my attention by some sharp viewers that in spite of saying that I have strike through, I can't actually strike through with a longsword or well two weapon fighting. For that, I must either have a bastard sword or dwarven axe, which are considered a strike through weapon, or just any two handed weapon. If I try to strike through with a single handed weapon, other than bastard sword or dwarven axe, it simply does not strike through, even though it says that I have 100% strike through. So, I am sorry about that. Well, what about the action points? Uh, I am going to unspend them and take them out of greater human aptitude for two-handed fighting. And I'm just going to move them over. So I'm going to spend all the points, the same place I did before, healing amp, action boost, surge, I'm going to take the wisdom. And then instead of the points that was spent in human aptitude, I'm just going to take constitution to my action boost. Basically, just moving the three points over. Well, now all we have to do is watch Warjack do the Walk of Shame down to Fred. Yes, just do it already. It has never been more appropriate. So yeah, taking a, a two-handed, two-handed fighting, and I'm gonna swap it out for toughness. Well, I'm very sorry about that. And I hope you'll forgive me. And with that, I guess we can move on with the rest of the video. Here I fixed up the Phoenix build all in one. And you can see it is fixed. And I hope that's done deal. Here we go. I think the most important thing to start off with is what I feel makes the Phoenix build the Phoenix build. So we can take it from there and see what we change or what we keep if you want to try to do different variations. My main goal with this build was to make a character that you could play easily. That means it would be a relaxing, simple gameplay that didn't demand you be always alert or on top of everything that's going on and still have the ability to do sufficient damage if you put the effort in. So this is not really a tank build, you can't take huge hits, but you can maintain yourself very easily, and if you try to put the effort in, you can actually boost up and do a lot of damage. Okay, so the main criteria that I'm trying to go for are the following. First of all, to have a way to heal yourself. And I wanted this healing to not be something you always have to do by reacting to the damage, that means taking damage and healing. Rather, it's something that happens automatically. I uh, just want to point out that the healing ability that we get from level 23 and up is not free. Even though it's infinite and it works all the time, it's still gonna cost you something. And that is, you're spending your epic stance on self-healing versus any other ability that probably would do more damage. So you're giving up your epic stance for infinite healing when many times you don't need all that healing so just keep that in mind uh, there's many different kinds of damage in the game and rather than trying to block all of them just being able to continuously heal is a solution to all of them so that's one goal continuously being able to heal yourself part of being able to heal yourself also includes being able to restore any kind of ability or stat damage and this build covers all of those things. As far as hit points are considered, I think that 2000 and above is what you should go for. Anything less than that, you'll be really squishy and having all the infinite healing won't help you if you can just die in one hit. So that's gonna be one of the focus points. Next, we get into damage output. Damage output has to be kind that is okay on its own and can be boosted up and become really good in a pinch so one of the things that i felt was really necessary is to have a speed attack boost 
I think that having that burst DPS of 30% speed is critical. And while you can get this from Vistani, and this is accessible to everyone, I'll be showing later in this video what you can do it, even without having Vistani. Now on to survivability. Another part of survivability, other than just healing up, is avoiding taking damage. This is why I added Diplomacy. If you're playing by yourself, Diplomacy doesn't help. But if you're in a group and you accidentally take aggro away from the tank, being able to one button Diplomacy and get aggro off of you is important. The next thing is being able to completely avoid damage by using evasion. I feel that a lot of the things that can kill you in one shot can be completely avoided if you have evasion. So trying to make a build who doesn't have to worry about traps if he has a good enough reflex save is one of the goals. So I'll be making sure that this build ends up with evasion no matter what we change. Another special ability is being able to get out of a sticky situation as fast as possible. So I feel that having a speed boost that will allow you to run and get out of any terrible situation really, really fast is important. Because many times just being able to get out of the fight for long enough for your self healing to tick and you'll be good. So having a speed boost is important and I'll be showing you how to access it even if you don't have falconry. Finally, the main gimmick, or the most known gimmick of this build, is being able to self-resurrect. Now, self-resurrect is something that you get from the tier 5 ability, Rise of the Phoenix, hence the Phoenix build. But, you might be thinking to yourself, well, rather than dying and then being able to resurrect myself, I might like just not dying. The thing about the Phoenix build is it's a very specific purpose. There's a very specific purpose of being able to resurrect multiple times. So we talked about this and I think his build is very cool. I think it's a very, very cool build, especially since there's a lot of like cool solo raid potential that you can do. The problem is that I don't want to die. So if I can pick things that make it so I don't have to worry about being dead to be effective, that's usually the angle that I'm going to go. Well, in that case, I've got you covered too. Introducing Divine Intervention. In the Phoenix build video guide, I used Grok over here to instant kill me many times so I could demonstrate the self-resurrection. Now what hap Now watch what happens when I use Divine Intervention. As you see, as soon as he touches me, well, uh, nothing happens. The way it works is the game checks anytime it tries to do an instant kill, and if you have Divine Intervention on you, it will simply not kill you. It leaves the buff on, by the way. So you have a full five minutes where you just cannot die to instant kills. There is a two minute cooldown, however, so you can't recast it on yourself or anybody else while you are in cooldown. Um, this doesn't mean that you are invincible. This just means that instant kills don't kill you. Now you might be asking, well, what happens if I take fatal damage? Well, if you take fatal damage, it will block the death from happening. But once it blocks it, it will heal you up for a bit, and then the buff will be removed. For instance here, I resurrected myself and then I hit Divine Intervention. Right after, I took some fatal damage. But instead of dying, I get knocked over, become unconscious, then I heal up. But as soon as I finish healing, the buff, the Divine Intervention buff, gets dispelled. So I won't be able to cast it for another whole two minutes. Here's a clip of me demonstrating it to Axel during our collab stream. Yeah. We got divine intervention on. Yeah, I used to use uh, I used to use un unhealing sentinel a lot. Uh, but can't really do that now. Did you walk through Garko, like Grok, Grokko, Garko, whatever his name. Or did you chicken out the last second? I didn't run through him. <laughs> I could. I mean, I could. I guess I could. <laughs> yeah, well, next time we You're see like, him, still I'll. Not sure about it. No, I'll, I'll, I'll run through next time we see him. Um, Trihax says, Aldbar, are you trying to get me killed? <laughs> he wanted me to test out Divine are Intervention. Do are Here, do I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? Come on. You better have it. Wait, I didn't die at oh, all. Oh, look at you. <laughs> you matured. It's amazing. Oh, 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 oh. Magic. Sorry. 
I thought it would kill me and then raise me. I didn't think it would just ignore the cube but entirely. But don't walk through the traps over there. There's traps, there's traps, there's traps. The traps still can heal you. <laughs> if you drop no, you I'm invincible. You're not invincible. You yes, I am. Die. I'm in a cube. <laughs> this is really dumb. I didn't. I didn't know it would work like this. Shouldn't it kill me and then raise me? Why is it? It's just like ignoring it. That's funny. Well, it tries to say, "Well, are you?" It tries to instant kill you. Instant kill you. It can't because you've got divine intervention. That's it. It only uses up the charge. Just remember this. It only uses up the charge if you drop the zero. And that's the secret. It's in the description if you read it. That's what it says. It's working as intended. Now there's some times in the game where the game really doesn't want you to do that. So it like basically, uh, like we call it plot armor, it prevents you from doing that. And what it does is it will drop your health to zero a few times rapidly. So even if you have divine intervention, you'll still die. Because it will like instantaneously drop you to zero that way trying to kill you. So even if you have divine intervention, it doesn't work. Yeah, I'm sure it doesn't work like in the, uh, like for example, like the shroud. I'm sure it still kills you, doesn't it? I think I think Shroud is one of the few exceptions where it does work, where it doesn't work. Yeah. No, I can't see him. These stupid shaman. In your house. Stupid shaman need to stop. No. <laughs> okay, divine intervention didn't help me there. Well, it helped you once. Well, I mean, but it res me right in the middle of the freaking trap again. Thank you. Yeah, that's why having a something who ticks for self healing is overpowered. Puzzle time. Uh, divine intervention. Oh yeah, divine intervention. We're gonna be able to do this really quick. Uh, actually, mine's on cooldown, so I can't use it. Oh right, shoot! No! Why did I not jump to the water? Okay, that was done. An honorable mention goes to what I'm going to dub the accidental permanent wraith form. If you cast Curse, uh, Curse Blade of Jack Jibbers and resurrect yourself as a wraith, and then you hit Divine Intervention, well, after 10 seconds are up, the game will try to instant kill you. And it can't because you have Divine Intervention. So you simply don't die. You move out of wraith form into natural form. But you still have that blade stuck in your chest, which is a separate buff who has the rotting. And it just keeps on stacking. And it will stack and stack and stack until it gets to 99 and continue stacking. Well, the counter doesn't go up. And this means that you can't rest because it takes every like less than six seconds and you won't have enough time to rest. And you're just going to take more and more damage. And if you have lots of healing like me, you can't even, <laughs> you can't even kill yourself. You have to like turn off the self healing and wait desperately for your character to die just so you can be able to rest or to resurrect properly and rest so this is well not exactly working as intended but i think it's kind of balanced the fact that you can resurrect yourself in the divine intervention but you have to live with the penalty of taking damage all the time so if you happen to have to need this well now you know there's such a thing in summary divine intervention is more of a do not die versus rise of the phoenix who is die and then resurrect yourself personally i actually tend more towards the be able to resurrect yourself because i'm much more of a oops i didn't notice what i was doing and give me a second chance versus being on top of not dying all the time by making sure you keep on refreshing divine intervention either way i can say i used both and both have their special use cases and you should see which one's best for you in which scenario and try to do the best out of both. Okay, to get to Divine Intervention, that is Tier 5 of the War Peace Tree. So, Core 1 gives you Smite Foe, which is a special attack, which has a whole bunch of things who scale off of it. Uh, the main point of this tree is a whole bunch of bonus damage and attack to your favorite weapon, which in my case is Longsword, because I am follower of the Sovereign Host. Okay, cores, tiers, two, three, and four, they all add melee and range power and stuff. Uh, three gives you a buff that you can cast for PRR, and four gives you permanent blur and 10% insightful enhancements to your total hit points. This is huge. Okay, we get over here some more hit points on the bottom. 
And then above that, uh, we have the whole line of abilities who adds to our attack and damage. Smite weaknesses uh, basically adds vulnerability when you use your smite foe. So this is very good for extra damage. Assuming, of course, using your smite foe. This special strike gives a heal AoE and a restoration AoE. This is very powerful and you can use it without any spell points. So very, very good for healing in a pinch. And you can use it all the time. You got an action boost power that has 30 to your melee power, unlike the human version, who only has 20. So you have both versions if you want to use them. Of course, we get some extra wisdom from the tree and some extra double strike. Uh, Divine Vessel, the melee attack, is a cleave. You have to charge it up after 25 hits with your smite foe. It stacks up and you can cast it like once and then it has to recharge again. It hits really hard. Uh, you don't need a divine power because we don't use uh, strength and we already have all the attack and damage levels. This Tiap core is also very powerful. Divine uh, based Bastion doesn't work because we don't have armor at all. And Divine Intervention is the king of the show, which is the reason we really go into this tree in the first place. Well, yeah, that's basically the War Priest in a nutshell. Epic Destiny's Variations Shadow, Shadow Dancer isn't so great with this build, but I did use it occasionally just to get Dimension Door, also upgrade my evasion to improve the evasion, and probably the Assassinate can go good with your Falconary, some extra spell points, uh, a few more reflex saves who monks are very good at but clerks are terrible at and most importantly i got from here the ability to be immune to energy drain i tried to use i used this actually when i was doing my solo run of how the zoriat the Mind crusader has some very good abilities but the dps isn't that good it's more of a defensive i would say uh, just in case you can't use your Exiled Angel. Consecrate has a healing effect, but you have to stand inside of the circle. I use this for soloing uh, the two Abbot Raids, because the mantle over here will allow me to prevent myself from becoming stoned, and this ability made it so I could heal myself. This is basically the setup the way I would, I would recommend it if you're trying to go into uh, to go into Divine Crusade. I would say about this tree, you have the ability over here to take any of the possible favored weapons. Just keep in mind, you have to actually be proficient with that weapon. So you can't just take a weapon you're not proficient with either by being just either a monk or a cleric. You'll have to actually take proficiency with that weapon. I would say that the most disappointing aspect of this tree is its tier 5. Uh, I don't think they compete really good for their price with other tier 5s. I will say though, it's epic moment, while being lackluster, has potentially the best possible epic phoenix moments, because it can one-click resurrect an entire party. So if the whole entire party wipes, you can hit Rise of the Phoenix, and then hit this epic moment, and in like 3 seconds the entire party will be up at full health. So this can be an amazing epic moment. But other than that, I was I found this underwhelming. Grandmaster of Flowers is a very powerful tree, and it has ability to bypass damage reduction types and alignment damage reduction types. Basically, everything in this tree is really good. It's uh, resistances, immunities, a whole bunch of really powerful things. Its epic strike is very good. I find it very powerful. I use the epic uh, stance for the extra movement speed when I did my Defiler of Just Run to speed up my movement speed because I need to get to get it faster around. Um, the Drifting Lotus is a very powerful attack. Uh, surprisingly, just because I'm not using hand wrap, so that's extra good. I would say that the downside of this tree is that the tier 5 abilities all cost 2 points making it so you're going to have to go all in in this tree, and if you don't have a lot of points, you're not going to be able to spend them in any other tree. 
So I would say that that's kind of the downside of this tree. And a lot of the attacks here are slower than let's say Legendary Dreadnought. Also from this tree, you can get the ability to use long swords as a key weapon and stay centered. So if for some reason you did some kind of weird combination of this build and don't have whirling steel strikes, you can get it from here. All of the different modifiers for the stances are very good. Notice that uh, if you're in the stance of the same element, it gives you instead of 25% absorption, it's 50. It's not really 50, it's just doubles 25 and then from the last 75, it's another 25%. So closer to 40 something percent absorption. Also, one of these epic moments uh, is way more powerful if you happen if you want to go for damage if you happen to be a dark monk i i happen to be light monk making it well not as exciting because i don't actually usually need all the extra defense legendary dreadnought is my primary tree but if i'm not using it as a primary tree i'll try to get at least the extra bonus to the action boost to will add to my stats and extra action boosts so I can use them a lot. Having a lot of action boost means I basically can action boost the entire time between, between shrines. Here's my setup for Fury of the Wild. Try to take all the cores for the unconscious raid, take adrenaline for extra powerful hits. And when I go for the extra charge attack over here, I'm not using a two-handed weapon, so I have to go through the option, and this is kind of like a charge attack. A primal scream it doesn't add to wisdom, but it adds to dex, con, and strength, and it can be doubled over here. And also, it makes the primal scream damage much more powerful. This over here makes it so tier three makes the primal scream actually act as a heal. So just another way to heal yourself while in the middle of a fight. This ability makes it so that when you drop below a certain point of health, you start automatically healing. This just stacks with even more healing, making it even harder to kill you. Overall, this tree probably has the most uh, straight up damage when it comes to single targets. Yeah, and make sure you take the the, sh the second, the offhand strike chance, not strike through. Also know that, notice that the tier 4 ability over here gives more than the tier 3. If you have the extra feet over here, the Harmoning of Chaos will give you 100 points instead of just 50. So, if you're going to go into this tree, you might want to swap out a feet for it. Dunbridal Fury is actually kind of underwhelming when it comes to its epic moment. But if you're taking this tree, you want to take it. And don't take Great Lavely or whatever it is. If you do take this, you have to notice that every time you use it, you have to actually move your character before you can do anything. You have to like step aside or you'll freeze in place. Just is super oppressive because you forget to move, you can't do anything. Front yielding a sentinel, basically the first two cores and the energy resistance are the ones you want to go. That's 70 hit points right over there. And it's 35 resistance, who I only have 30 for my regular spell. So this can be a very good ability to take if you just want some more tankiness to add to your build. Well, now to my first life free-to-play Phoenix build. This is tailored for players playing with a first life, have no ability points, no skills. Note that if you have only 28 points, you'd be taking 13 in strength and dexterity, not 14 in each. This will not require any tomes or any past lives or anything, anything. You don't have to have any premium abilities. Basically, you take dodge and toughness to start out, um, skills, you can take the skills for trappers, but you're not going to be able to max them out eventually, so I would say forget it. Just try to max out heal. Heal is the one that you really need, because that's going to be the rest, rest of the build. I'll have all the skill lists later, and you can follow along, but this build focuses on using a quarter staff, and we're going to be using a quarter staff as our favorite weapon. And this will make us so we can use the two-handed the two-handed fighting tree and become really powerful. The first thing you want to know, of course, is take the rogue abilities. As soon as you have four action points, they will add your quarter staff speed. Level two, you're gonna take another level of rogue and get evasion. This is auto granted. You can try to still get some of your trapper skills, but you're gonna have to forget about it later. So heal, heal that's the ones that's really important. If you want jump, maybe that's it. 
For now, we're gonna build up a little bit more of the rogue tree and we're gonna take the haste boost for our attack. This is gonna make it so if you drag it to your action bar, you can click on it and it will speed up your attack boost. And now you will attack even faster with your quarter staff. After we got our first two levels of rogue, we're gonna start taking cleric levels. So for our deity feat, we're gonna take follower of uh, Orion, Orion, I don't know how to say his name. He basically makes quarter staff to become a favorite weapon and we take quicken. This is for all, our, all of our healing spells. Of course, just max out skill, I'm gonna forget. I'm not gonna keep on mentioning this every level. Uh, action points are to max out your attack boost and then we take smite foe. This is we're gonna be our special attack. We're gonna add and add more attack and damage from the tree. Uh, make sure to upgrade your haste boost and also put smite foe on your action bar. You're gonna be smashing this all the time, basically hitting with it as much as soon as it's off cold cooldown, you wanna hit with that. Be used to it. A lot of things scale off of it. We're gonna be taking animal domain, and that's because we wanna hit our amount of hit points and this gives us a very nice boost to hit points and that's really important if you're a first life character and you want to be steady. Um, we're going to build up a little bit more to attack and damage with quarter staffs and then start putting the rest of our points into the war, um, war priest tree. Also don't forget to take out your domain, your turn on dead ability. This gives you a buff to constitution every time you use it. We're gonna keep on leveling up our cleric abilities and adding more and more points into the War Priest tree. Our next feat is gonna be Power Attack. And Power Attack is really good when you have a two-handed weapon because you lose five to your attack and double that amount gets added to your damage. Once you have the opportunity, you're gonna take the action boost that adds 30 melee power and you're gonna be able to use this alternating between this and a speed boost. Well, basically with one of them runs out, you can use the other one. This is a strength focused build. So everything's gonna be around strength. Okay, once we've got our five levels of cleric. So we're going to take ranger. Uh, for our fire red enemy, we usually take undead first because that's probably the most abundant thing you'll run into. Uh, this is a, We're going to take a, this opportunity to take some points in the human tree and we're going to make it so every time we use an action boost, it gives us a whole bunch of extra points to strength. So now every time we use an action boost and we have three of them, we get an extra boost of strength. Another three strength. So yeah, this is a big deal. This is gonna add to your tank and to your damage. Uh, keep on building up the two-handed fighting. And keep, as, as we level up, this is our main focus. Human tree, of course, we're gonna take healing amplification and more strength. Uh, once we have the option we're gonna take the special ability. This actually is a boost to wisdom, which is not our main stat, but hey, that's what it is. Great weapon aptitude is gonna add us to our two-handed fighting. And make it even stronger, and we can take more cores in the War Priest as well. As you can see, using the buff, use uh, buffs of your PRR, it's a very nice buff. It lasts for a duration based on your cleric level and has a cooldown of 10 minutes. At cap will be about two minutes up and eight minutes down, 20% of the time. We're gonna take improved critical bludgeoning because that's gonna add our critical multiplier to quarter staffs. So 
over here we're gonna just uh, unspend our points from human because we would like to rush the tier five of war priest and we need a few extra points so we're gonna take them out and spend them in this tree this will allow us to move up the the top over here we're gonna take divine power because that's another six to our strength and the divine vessel is a nice melee attack who needs to stack up and of course divine intervention that means from now on as long as we keep divine intervention up it won't die to any instant kill and we'll have a second chance even if we drop below nine You'll see the divine intervention, the divine vessel has a zero next to it. But if you attack monsters enough, it will start stacking up. And once it gets to, once it has 25 stacks, it will say one. And then you know you can use it. Divine intervention has a five minute duration, but a two minute cooldown. So you can only cast it every two minutes. You can cast it again on yourself before it runs out. And you can even cast it on other people. The more levels of cleric domain we get, the more we can take to an animal domain and now we have the ability to bypass for 15% fortification. Right now I'm just spending back the points in human that I took out from before. Over here I want my action boost to add to my strength and of course I'm going to take the extra points into two-handed fighting. Now I'm going to take mobility because I'm going for the line of dodge mobility and spring attack. There is a attack from Rogue Gold Quick Strike who adds double strike. I already have abilities that double strike and it doesn't stack, so you can't see it. Finally, once we have our third level rogue, we can take the core two, who actually grants us an extra feat called Swords to Plowshares, who improves our critical even more with the quarter staff. Once I have uh, 12 levels of Cleric, I'm going to respec this tree because I spent before two points on PRR and I'm going to move one of them over to the core four that will give me 10% insight bonus to all of my hit points and permanent blur, which is, well, very useful. So over here, before I used two points and now I only spent one. Yeah, so if the tree looked like this before and to progress I'd have to put one more in PRR so now I use that point over here take all the stuff from the top make sure you take the melee version and that's it and this is how I'm going to leave this point this tree with 30 uh, 36 points from roll we can take sweeping strikes this is a super powerful cleave attack and even more strike through You can see we've got 25% concealment. Sweeping Strike, as you can see, is a 360 cleave and it goes through everything. So, really good. Max out our Strike Through and take even more strength. We can only go up three, le three levels in, in T Thief Acrobat. Uh, for our domain, we're going to get Feral Charge, which is a special attack, and it jumps forward, but it also attacks and goes through things, so it'll hit everything on the way. Finally, I'm going to spend a few points into Ranger, and a bit of avoiding traps. Well, here you can see, inside of Cleric Domains, I can pull out Feral Charge from the Tier 4 Animal Domain, and it looks like this. It turns into a big, uh, a big Dire Bear, and it charges through things and it can do a lot of damage.
through all your accomplishments, you have transcended the title. As you can see here, I'm now taking my sprint boost. This way, I have a free to play a free to play character who's got haste boost and sprint boost. Um, fun fact: I believe that the sprint boost is actually five percent faster than the Falcon or different sprint boost. So, hey, yeah. So you can use it together with Feral Charge and get out of trouble really fast. Once you get to your epic destinies, don't forget to take epic defensive fighting and turn it on. That's, I mean, you don't take it, it's auto granted, but just don't forget to turn it on. Give you a huge boost to your total hit points. Most of this build from this point on is basically very similar to the regular Felix build, but we're here instead of taking all of the monk abilities, we're taking the line of dodge mobility and spring attack. Spring attack is a feat on the martial feats and has an active opponent component who allows you to jump and uh, do like a long jump and then it's attack. And you can uh, chain it together with feral charge to do a double long jump and to get through monsters and get out of trouble really, really fast. One found a life for extra healing. Eventually you take precision at level 30, because this is for boss battles and you want to get through their fortification. You can turn off power attack by turning on precision. And sign of Celestia is so you get a whole bunch of extra hit points and more healing. For the Epic Destinies, I'm going to set it up basically just like the standard Phoenix build, but I'm going to be spending some extra points inside of Fury of the Wild and be picking up Adrenaline. Uh, I don't use Adrenaline all the time, but I have it so I can swap it out for boss battles. Also over here, I'm taking a special attack for two-handed fighting to weapons, which is what I have. After all, I'm using a quarterstaff as a two-handed weapon. Deepening Faith is a must if you want to have more hit points and then I'm just going to spend all the rest of the points in uh, Legendary Dreadnought the same way I would spend it in the regular tree make sure over here you're taking the bludgeoning version make sure you take the melee attack yeah, this is basically the setup. So I'm going to have Dire Charge and Adrenaline, and I'm going to be using only one of them. So regular quest is Dire Charge, because that does AoE damage. And if I'm going up against a single boss, so I'll be spamming the Adrenaline, and that'll do more damage. This special attack is not part of the, the Epic Moment Strike, so you can use it by itself. And you can use Adrenaline comboed with any of these other attacks, making some of these attacks like really, really powerful. Mind you, the adrenaline charge only gets spent when you actually hit with it. Okay, yeah, so this is the Phoenix build by Arabal, first life free to play version with everything you need. Just look at this and you can follow it along. I hope I explained it enough. Now, I made a second version of this build, a similar version. This is second life and above free to play style which switches up a few things, this, a few order of the, the leveling, and this is three ranger instead of three rogue. Basically, everything's kind of the same, but this one actually uses two-handed, uh, sorry, two-weapon fighting. So if you want that style extra thing, uh, you want it to look like the Phoenix build I made, so this is the option for you. The setup is basically the same. Um, so everything from Legendary Dreadnought and Exiled Angel will all be the same exact setup. And the only thing you have to remember is your, of course, your tier 5 is going to be slashing, not bludgeoning. Um, this is just like the regular Phoenix build. And the other thing you need to remember is when you go into Fury of the Wild, so the extra charge attack, the extra special attack you're going to be taking is going to be the charge attack, not the two-handed fighting special attack. 
basically you can see the two comparison between the, you can see the comparison between the two corner staff just hits harder but not as much hits and the two weapon fighting hits faster many more hits but not as strong but basically they're kind of the same and it's more of like a style the main difference will be when you do a whole bunch of enemies together here for the iconic version so if you want to go with the morning lord and make an iconic that works just like the regular phoenix build you'll see the problem you're starting with is you cannot take following follow the sovereign host which will not allow you to become proficient with long swords and you want to take the whirling steel strike so just take whatever you you can take who's follow of amanatur and yeah we'll take it from here basically we're going to just refuse training and we're going to level up as a pure cleric so war domain etc and i'll have the whole list of feats so you can follow along later but basically i'm going to go straight cleric all the way to the top make sure i max out my heal my concentration and anything else i've got i'll put into jump so this is very similar to the the regular phoenix build just i'm not using any monk levels 15 levels of cleric straight of course you have to take improved critical slashing because this is a long sword build okay once you've made it to level 15 so you're going to invest your points into falconry you're going to take your regular stuff that i would take in the regular build and you can take wisdom to hit damage quality hit points all the good stuff assassinate dcs etc you can take your special cleave attack uh helpless damage well all, all, everything you would have taken in the regular build uh Vistani knife fighter is going to give you all the stuff you need for the special haste boost so again this is all standard just like the regular build now the tricky thing is we don't have any monk levels yet so for now we're going to be spending all of our points inside of the war priest tree so when you start this build up you're basically going to be playing kind of like with the free-to-play versions where you max everything out in the war priest tree just remember that you're taking wisdom so and just just don't forget that point you really want to get the extra hit points yeah so for you can start off at level 15 uh follow of Aminato allows you to turn on this fire shield thing so you might as well turn it on and you can wear heavy armor until level 20 because we cannot use we cannot be centered with long swords anyways since well we don't have the ability to do it yet and if you're not going to be centered you might as well just use heavy armor so well while you're rushing to 20 you're just going to be playing as if you're a level 15 cleric and using heavy armor and ignoring the fact you're not centered once you hit 20 so now you're going to unspend all the points in war priest and now respend them in shintao like you would have done if you had levels of uh of cleric oh sorry if you had levels of monk in the first place you're not you're not going to be able to center to be centered yet but we'll take care of that in just a moment but once you've got everything set up uh, just like you would have had with the uh, with regular with the regular build uh, you have one thing you can take over here which is kind of a, it's instead of follow the sovereign host that allows you to heal yourself to full over here this is a charge you can use twice per rest but it has the exact same effect now for the final trick you have to go into grandmaster of flowers and you have to build your way up to tier two and you have an ability over here which allows you to take whirling steel strike and now you'll be able to be centered with long swords and finally now you can become centered so that's it from now on you have no armor you are centered with long swords and basically yeah there you go you can be an iconic version of the phoenix build so if you want to check it out enjoy it here's everything you need to do anyway from all the different combinations i've presented i hope you can cobble together a build that you like um i hope you enjoy this this video took forever to produce and to put together so thank you for sticking till the end i still have the wrap-up video to come so hope that one comes out soon doesn't take as long as this one and thank you very much and i hope to see you all there bye